right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Good evening, I'm Holden Kerwicki. Brent Solomon is off tonight. We begin with breaking news in Ferguson. Right now, police are investigating a double shooting on West Florissant Avenue. Five on your side's Annie Crawl joins us live on scene. Annie, what are police telling you at this time? Holden, we're live at Ferguson Avenue and West Florissant Avenue. I'm right outside of Sam's Meat Market and more. I'm actually going to step out of the way just so you can see what that store looks like right now. Ferguson police are responding to that shooting that happened about an hour ago. In fact, we're right by the Boys and Girls Club of Greater St. Louis. We're by Northland Chop Suey. You can see people coming in and out trying to get dinner, peering their heads in, trying to figure out exactly what happened. We're going to continue asking those questions and have an update for you. Hope Hopefully soon, and once we do, you'll get more information from us. But for now, though, reporting live in Ferguson, Annie Crawl, five on your side. Annie, thank you. Five on your side will stay on top of this breaking story. Just look for updates on air, online at KSDK.com, and on the Five on Your Side app. The sun may have set, but the heat and humidity are sticking around in the by state tonight. Weather first meteorologist Gary Frank joins us now as we take a look over downtown St. Louis and Gary. Man, it's just so sticky outside tonight. Still sticky and hot. It's been pretty consistent for us here as it uh, doesn't cool off too much at night. That's what I think really we feel, not just the 95 degree weather. We can handle that for a couple of hours, but when it's already 85 at 8 o'clock in the morning, there is some relief and it's this front that doesn't look like much. And I'll circle, obviously, as I z we zoom in, you know, as I pause this, you know, I'll circle and obviously the most significant part of it here, which is well to the north. That's where the most severe weather is. But as I zoom in just a little bit more, this is not severe, nothing severe right now, and it's all falling apart. That's the type of rain that we're going to get as this front kind of drags further off to the south. And right now, as you just zoom in, it's in Macon, north of Moberly. It's kind of falling apart as we switch radars back and forth here in the areas in northern Missouri where they don't have a radar site. So uh, for the most part, though, this is just a light rain and it's gonna, not going to last too long, but as it drags through, it's going to take a while to get here overnight. Temperatures still at 87, as you mentioned, a south breeze at around 10 miles an hour. It's still sticky. It feels like 91 at this hour, and that trend continues into the rest of the night. Slight chances for rain, but it's nothing too significant, and I think the next few days it's still consistently hot, despite that cold front moving through later on. We'll talk about that and how dry we're starting to get based on what we've seen over the last few weeks. And if you need relief from the heat, just text the word heat to the number on your screen. That's 314-425-5355, and we'll send you a map of all nearby cooling centers. Right now, a bear cub is making headlines in West St. Louis County. This comes as the Missouri Department of Conservation warns that you could see more black bears roaming around. Earlier today, Annie Crawl went out on the bear hunt to Baldwin. Oh my God. Some five on your side viewers spotted a bear cub Friday evening in Baldwin, capturing it on video. It's a bear. That is a bear. They're in, in Baldwin. We have a bear in Baldwin. Marching through people's yards and white acre estates and even hitting up a local shopping center. Lori Kelling is the woman who filmed this video saying she's lived in Baldwin 30 years and has never seen a small bear in someone's backyard. It looked so harmless. It looked, you know, just like it was meandering through the neighborhood, like very comfortable and we weren't scared. There was no fear. It was just this tiny bear walking through and I was like, it looked lost. <laughs> The Missouri Department of Conservation says they're tracking the bear and think it was the same one seen earlier this week in Eureka. A clump of bushes and a fence. He was back there and then he stood up when he was done and came. <laughs> Neighbors tell me the bear slowly walked away from the subdivision, leaving in this direction towards a park, which is not far from the main drag of Manchester Road. There were no bear sightings at Velasquez Park on Saturday afternoon, but the Kirkwood police posted on their Facebook around one o'clock that, quote, there's a good chance the bear from the West County area has found its way into the West Kirkwood area. MDC says if you do see a bear in your neighborhood to back away from the animals slowly and with your arms raised, do not run away or turn your back to the bear. Let it do its thing. Let it get to wherever it needs to get to. And hopefully no one tries to, you know, interject by, you know, stopping it or trying to catch it or harm it or anything. Reporting in Baldwin, Annie Crawl, five on your side. It bears reminding that if you do come across a bear, 
Most importantly, do not try and approach it, feed it, or pet it. The best thing to do is just leave it alone. New at 10, if you're trying to buy or service a car, you might have to hold off. That's because cyber attacks are potentially slowing down business at thousands of car dealers. Software provider CDK Global said it experienced two cyber incidents this week and proactively shut down most systems. The restoration process could now take several days. CDK works with more than 15,000 dealers in North America, so it's not clear how many are impacted. Cybersecurity experts say this goes beyond the auto industry. This incident is part of a growing trend of cyber attacks towards small and medium sized businesses across the country. It is very much a crime of opportunity and a crime of financial gain. And so if there is money involved, there is the chance that this could happen. We've reached out to see if any of our local auto dealers are impacted. So far, we have not heard back. The Alton Riverfront is setting the stage for two major events this weekend. After a 44-year hiatus, the Mississippi River Festival took place at the Alton Amphitheater tonight. It was last held on the SIUE campus in 1980. The festival featured music by Grammy Award-winning artist Larkin Poe. At the same time, the F1 PowerPoint Racing Midwest Championship is taking place on the Mississippi River. It's the first time that that's happened in Alton in 32 years. The festival wraps up at 11.30 tonight. The powerboat racing resumes tomorrow morning. A beloved Alton restaurant that closed earlier this year is back in business. We stopped by My Just Desserts on Broadway this afternoon. The restaurant, known for its pies and sandwiches, closed back in March. The new owner says they finalized the purchase within the last month and wanted to open in time for this weekend's festival and boat races. The restaurant held a soft opening yesterday with the help of the previous owner and staff. It means a lot to um, offer the original community uh, what they fell in love with so much, you know. So we're uh, we're keeping the same core, you know, same great desserts, uh, same great chicken salad sandwiches, uh, a couple new sandwiches. Um, we premiered barbecue on Saturday today for the first time, so um, that's something that feel like it's going to be a game changer. So. My just desserts will be open from 11 until 3 every Wednesday through Sunday. A special day of service. Hundreds of volunteers commit to giving back to the community, how their work is helping improve the lives of families in need. Battling for the Lou, an esports competition is trying to find the best gamer in the city, how this is being used to bring positive change to the youth. You can connect with gaming no matter your age, no matter your race, no matter your religion. The, the aspect of gaming just brings us together. Once again, we've started to get dry after a wet April and May. We're starting to creep back into the drought. What that means over the next few days as we approach our first rain chance tonight, if we'll get any more the next few. Hours ago, hundreds of volunteers came together for a special day of service. Today, the United Way of Greater St. Louis held its first Unite With Us Day. The Leslie Bates David Neighborhood House in East St. Louis was one of more than 100 sites where folks gathered. There, they helped pass out food and home goods to area families in need. I, I see these needs, and we've been given this opportunity to help fill the gaps and help lift people up and get them involved. Right now, there are thousands of opportunities for you to help out across the region. You can check out those links right now on KSDK.com. Just look in the As Seen on TV section. Tonight in St. Louis County, NAACP's branch held its 87th annual Freedom Fund Dinner. The event gathers leaders, activists, and supporters from across the region to honor the efforts to those making significant strides in the fight for equality and justice. The keynote speaker was Texas Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett, who is a native St. Louisan. Five on your side's Brent Solomon served as master of ceremonies. Well, and we're still looking at this line of storms that is coming in from the north. How it will impact us overnight and how strong we can expect these storms to be. Today, a number of St. Louis area kids came together to test their skills in a video game tournament. We stopped by the Julia Davis Library this afternoon for Battle for the Lou. It's an esports tournament put together by the BGG Foundation, St. Louis Public Library, and the Mayor's Office. Competitors could win prizes, money, and even scholarships. We caught up with one competitor who said this is helping change the stigma that comes with video games. 
It can be viewed as so many different things, but as a skill in general, it's easy to develop, easy to learn, and easy to teach. And if it isn't, then that's the whole fun part about it. You take your time and you learn. You take your time and practice. Today's tournament is one of three that will happen this summer. The next one is taking place July 20th at Central Library. The winners of the first round of Battle for the Lou will get to compete at the Dome at America Center in September. Forest Park will officially open its first basketball courts next month. They will be located just north of the Visitor Center on Grand Drive. The site will include two full courts, two half courts, and a pavilion. According to Forest Park Forever, celebrations will consist of a ribbon cutting ceremony on Tuesday, July 9th, and a formal dedication ceremony on Saturday, July 13th. This morning, about 20 volunteers were on a mission to clean up the Jeff Vanderloo neighborhood. This is just one of several beautification projects they have planned in the area this summer. Tabernacle Community Development Corporation says hitting this neighborhood and it was in particular was important to set a standard for years to come. We want to beautify our neighborhoods. Like I said, you have the Central West End, you have Clayton, you have Richmond Heights, where people kind of take that, you know, first initiative to not litter. So hopefully if they see us getting on the ground, doing the groundwork, it's like reach one, teach one. They'll see that not only do we care about the community and our own backyards, maybe they will too. Tabernacle CDC will host another cleanup in the same neighborhood July 20th. If you're interested, you can register to volunteer online. Tonight, evacuations continue in western Iowa after flash flooding overtakes one small town. Overnight sirens sounded in the town of Rock Valley due to a levee failure on the Rock River. The Sioux County Sheriff's Office released video that shows parts of one city completely underwater. Iowa's governor sent helicopters to help evacuate people from flooded homes. We, we think we've got everybody out now, but we're, uh, they're coming anyway and they're going to stage here just in case somebody didn't call in uh, and is still stuck out there because some of our roads have got 10 foot of water on it and you can't drive through that. The Iowa governor issued a disaster emergency proclamation for 21 counties amid severe storms and flooding. As Iowa dries out, other parts of the country are trying to keep cool. Right now, more than 100 million Americans are under heat alerts this weekend, bringing blistering temperatures from the eastern seaboard all the way to the west coast. For the first time in eight years, Washington, D.C. hit 100 degrees. Hot summer weather can mean extreme temperatures inside of your car. Brandon Lewis from our National Verify team explains if tinting is worth the money. Verify here with your fast fact. Nobody enjoys that feeling when you open your car door on a hot summer day and it feels like an oven. Verify viewer M emailed us to ask if tinting her windows can help keep the inside cooler. So M, let's verify using these sources. The inside of a car gets hot because the sun's UV rays penetrate the glass. The energy from the rays is then absorbed by the surfaces and released as heat that gets trapped inside. All of our sources say tinting your windows can help block some of the sun's rays and keep the interior of your car a few degrees cooler. The exact amount depends on the darkness and quality of the tint and which windows are tinted. So yes, tinted windows reduce heat inside of a car. Tinting rules vary by state, so make sure to check the laws where you live. Whether you're Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. What would you like for us to verify? You can email us at verify at ksdk.com. Switching gear now to weather and Gary, you know, you said it earlier, it's 1018 right now and it still feels like it's in the 90s outside. Yeah, that's the key, right? When it's this warm and even when you get up that early, that's where your body doesn't have the chance to, you know, at least we can get away from it for a couple hours. But, you know, temperatures today got in the low to mid 90s. We actually got a break from where they could be uh, as we were expecting about 100 degrees between 98 and 100. We had a few more clouds around ahead of this front. You can see, kind of see that as we loop things around. And, uh, you know, what's going on right now is we have, you can see where these clouds were specifically, right? Just out ahead of that. That's where that wide area of clouds was and then the sun came out right before sunset and then we have this line of storms that's rather shoddy it's just kind of holding together barely but uh, it's a little bit stronger to the north and for the most part the severe thunderstorm watches for areas in Chicago in northern Illinois it does drag into a few counties in Missouri and Illinois not in our area but north of us and that's always something we look at these are kind of just kind of as like a hey 
we're just kind of looking at this. I don't think these storms are going to be uh, anything significant. That goes until 1 a.m. I think that falls apart even as this system starts to slide south. And I'll show you what this looks like because you can see where this line of storms as it is right now. Watch how it starts to fall a little bit further to the south here. And as it continues to get closer to us, notice that it gets much, much lighter. We're starting to see those intense colors start to fade just a little bit. And then by 2 o'clock in the morning, widely scattered showers and storms, and then that's out of here by daybreak tomorrow. So potential rainfall, it's not all that significant. There may be some locally heavy totals, but I think overall you're going to see a tenth of an inch or less almost everywhere. So don't prepare for much rain. This is not going to give us a break, and it's not going to bring some relief in terms of heat and humidity. Weak storms move through overnight. We're in the mid 70s. So as you start off tomorrow morning, the fact that we've had this kind of jet stream sag a little further south, giving us opportunity for a few of these storms. So if nothing else, that's something, but we'll watch this high continue to retreat to the desert southwest. It gets stronger and it continues to sit here and we will see the opportunity for our next round of storms here uh, as well. Once that starts to at least fade just a little bit more, you'll see that by Wednesday into Thursday. I think that's our next break with lower humidity, but this high still reigns supreme and kind of sits here and builds strength again as we head into the weekend. That means it gets hot. That means it remains dry. So our forecast heat index for the next couple of days, you'll see by Sunday, not as bad, but by Monday around 100 by Tuesday, even more so as we continue to look at the drought as well. The drought situation is just kind of on the teetering edge before it gets impressive, and I think our potential rainfall the next few days shows that uh, we could maybe see a couple of spots that numbers gone up, but we still see the possibility for drought to continue. So over the next few days, temps at 101 on Tuesday. Hopefully we start to get some of these thunderstorm complexes move south in the middle of the night. That's our best bet for breaking the streaks of the heat. Otherwise, at least it's less humid on Thursday. And we've got a couple of chances Tuesday into Wednesday and then Saturday into Sunday. So it's safe to say the heat is here to stay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Gary. Now here's Corey of Sports. Speaking of the heat, hot day on the baseball diamond and on the soccer pitch. One Cardinal slugger kept up his sizzling month of June while City SC, well, they were just trying to finally get the ball into the net. We'll recap it all coming up next in sports. This five on your side sports report is sponsored by Telly Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. Coming into tonight, City SC had not scored in the last 292 minutes of play. Their last goal, well, it came against Messi in Miami back on June 1st. Not only was City trying to end that streak tonight against Atlanta at City Park, they were trying to get their first win in 43 days. Things may have been rough recently, but the fans still show up. Another packed house at City Park tonight. First half was more of the same. Plenty of City chances, no City goals. Looks like Noki Thorson is going to break the streak, but wait. We're going to go to review. The refs are going to go all the way back and assess a foul on Edu Leuven before that goal, and it's no goal. Nobody in the stadium can believe it. However, finally in the 50th minute, hallelujah, the 341 minute scoreless streak is over thanks to Indiana Vasilev, 1-0 City. 71st minute, Atlanta gets a penalty kick. Roman Berkey makes the first save, but Atlanta follows it up to score. That ties the game and the captain is steaming mad. City had some more chances late, but it is a familiar result. St. Louis won, Atlanta won. It is City's MLS leading 10th draw of the season as the winless streak rolls on. So the soccer gods aren't with us um, as of late. Uh, we keep on pushing, we keep on keeping the spirits high, um, and we're moving on. Uh, I thought the, the support was awesome tonight. I thought it was fantastic. Um, and just the acknowledgement of the fans after the game when we did the round. Uh, very supportive, very embracive of what, uh, of what we're trying to do here. The Cardinals in the 500 mark have done their best Sam and Diane routine this year. Will they, won't they? That's a cheers reference for the younger crowd. The Cards have climbed above 500 just twice this year heading into today, but they're hoping today's hike over the hump is the one that finally sticks. Fun pitching matchup on paper. He's Former really Cardinals teammates Miles Michaelis and his old friend Jordan Hicks for the Giants. Giants got to Michaelis early, tagging him for three runs in the first inning. He did settle down. Another strong start for Miles. Cards offense rose to the challenge today. Paul Goldschmidt. That's a two-run shot. That made it 3-2. Goldie's 350th career home run. Fourth inning now. Star of the game. Alec Burleson tees off in this Jordan Hicks pitch. It's a three-run shot. Cards go up 5-4. And then again, he's going to do it again. Another Burley bomb. Two-run shot this time. 7-4 cards as Burleson gets his first career two-homer game. Home runs were contagious today. Brendan Donovan stays hot as well. 
obliterates that ball in seven. Cardinals win 9-4 at the top of the lineup punch. A Mason win and Alec Burleson combined for six hits, five runs, and six RBIs. You know, Corey, it seems like City and the Cardinals kind of roll reversed. You know, we didn't yeah. have a lot of hopes for the Cardinals. Had a lot for City. Seems like that's turned around we a little bit. We definitely can't, can't get them both going at the same time. <laughs> I know that's for sure. Well, you know, as hot as the temperature is outside, maybe, you know, that can get them going out there, Gary. What, well, what can we look forward to? It didn't tonight. Not tonight. So I'm just kidding. I'm we had 18 kidding. minutes of stoppage time because it was so hot. They had to take some water I did. Yeah. I did see the water break. That's a very United States thing. Not <laughs> that's a good point. You, you yeah. might not, you're not going to see that in the Copa no, or the don't. Euros. Yeah, uh, we got more water breaks, and you should take a water break. If they're taking a water break, even though they're running around for 90 minutes, you should take a water break, or at least a break in the AC or in the shade, because, you know, it's still pretty warm. We're going to see more of those days. Uh, a little rain tonight, nothing significant. Maybe Tuesday and Wednesday we can get something that's at least over a quarter of an inch. All right, thank you, Gary. That's all of our time here for Five on Your Side at 10 o'clock. Saturday Night Live is coming up next. Start your day with today in St. Louis at 6 a.m.